What up, everybody? This is your boy, Theo Pence here. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube so you don't miss any Run Your Race content. What up, everybody? This is your boy, Theo Pinson here with another episode of Run Your Race with my boy, who is finally back. Put the mic down the platform. <laughs> who is finally yeah. back from his hiatus of... My man been grinding. Hey, man. My man been grinding. AJ Richardson is back, baby. Good morning, beautiful people. And he's still... It is the afternoon here, so hey, he is changed. still saying the wrong <laughs> shit. <laughs> Ain't nothing changed, though. We might need to trademark that. Not facts. Real talk. That's now, right. literally, when I be on the EYBL circuit, people come up and be like, Good morning, beautiful people. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. It's really crazy. But hey, listen, everybody. We back, and we got a very, very, very special guest here today. Texas legend. Facts. Miles Turner. Facts. What's going on, folks? I'm back in uh, damn Irving, Texas, my boy. Theo. Yes, Irving, Texas. <laughs> hey, listen. Miles, listen. I appreciate you coming on. Uh, you are truly a legend here in Texas. You're with the Texas. Sir. And you're from Texas. Yes, indeed. And what we do here, man, we we talk about from the very beginning. We um, just run your race. Everybody has different races. We went we've went and talked about it, both of ours, how we started this whole thing. We've all went about our lives in different ways, and everybody has a different race that they run. And we want you to tell your story. How how did you get to where you are? And just let the people know. So, Miles, where are you from? Absolutely. I'm rocking a skip, bro. Bedford, Texas, 10 minutes down the road. Mm -hmm. uh, born and raised. Uh, and if anybody knows me, I rep Texas hard, man, anywhere I go. Um, you know, my pops and my moms, they're still together about to celebrate their 30th anniversary, you know, next month. Congrats. So, Congrats. Um, you Congrats. know, I come from a come from a great family, great, great family, man. Little sister, grew up with two, three cousins as well. Um, and it's real tight in the community, man. I mean, basketball for me was something I did for fun, obviously, mm -hmm. but my pops is very passionate. You know, he's from Queens, from New York, and uh, you know, out there, East Coast had to get down. So, sure. you know, he was for very sure. passionate and uh, instilled a lot of that in my mentality and just uh, how I roll at such a young age. And my mother's a, she a shark, man. She a shark for real. And mm -hmm. just the uh, mentality, the aggressiveness, that's kind of where I get a little bit of my style of play as well. You know, a lot of that's just from her and just her instilling Stuff to me at such a young age. So, yeah, man, Bedford, Texas, bro, 10 minutes down the way. Um, and, uh, you know, I tell people Dallas, DFW, it's all one of the same. You yeah, know, it's you all know, the same one shit. of the residents. It's just uh, <laughs> everything. The Metroplex is uh, real close. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. So, you're from Dallas. And, like we said, it's the same. Metroplex. It's, yeah, yeah, it's the same shit. But when did you pick up the rock? When did you, like, okay. This is this is what I'm gonna do. So funny or not, bro, baseball was my first love, bro. I love baseball. baseball. See, I was just getting that, bro. <laughs> I was what? getting that, bro. The white boys ran and start coming with that heat. <laughs> <laughs> that strike zone got big, yeah, bro. Your strike zone crazy. So you know, I um, I, I played baseball and basketball. Baseball was was, was the first love from T-ball all the way up to about seventh grade. Then you know that puberty happened. I told you I stretched out and yeah. just couldn't really uh you know, hang anymore. Mm -hmm. So um, I'd always played basketball at a young age and I'd always had a talent for blocking shots. Even before I can score, even before I can do anything, I can always. block shots, mm -hmm. right? So my, my dad just saw that and was like, okay, we can do something with this. Mm -hmm. And he always just, um, man, I was that kid who was after, who stayed after every practice. You know, I was working on ball hand. I was shooting like after every single practice with him. He had this little cooler he'd bring about, had the ice bags, he'd wrap my knees afterwards and he was very committed. And I really wasn't as committed, bro. Like I just, uh, Hoops is cool, you know, way to girl for the girls to look at you, you know, mm -hmm. way for just to get out there and just uh, you know, be with some of the homies after school as opposed to doing homework and shit. So, mm -hmm. you know, I just kinda did it just for fun. I didn't really take it very seriously. And um as I started to grow, um, obviously that came with growing pains and whatnot. So I even even then I was like, Man, I'm tired of this shit, bro. I almost wanna go hang out with the uh, with the homies and whatnot. I was also one of the kids who ain't really do shit in high school, bro. Mm -hmm. Like I really Go to them all the time. I ain't really like you know party and stuff like that. I ain't drink or smoke none of that none of that type of stuff. So I was really really on my p's and q's. And um, you know I broke my ankle my sophomore year of high school, and um, I came onto the scene very late. You know I didn't really start going to the Nike camps or mm -hmm. getting ranked or anything like that until the end of my junior year, going into my senior year. And a blessing to disguise at that. You know I really wasn't like didn't really care for it as much. And um, after I broke my ankle, it made me really reevaluate everything. It made me realize how much I missed the game of basketball and I missed like that grind, bro, and just that work. And um, from then on, I started taking it a little bit more seriously. Then started getting invited to some of the camps, whatnot. That's where I met, you know, you and mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people from our 2014 class got a lot of love, bro. Like For we sure. really yeah. had a lot of guys. Get we were to a tight knit group. Yeah, we really, really was, a tight -knit bro. Group. 
But it was it was strange for me because y'all were the tight knit group, and I kind of came in not knowing anybody, bro. I didn't. I'm gonna keep it stack. I didn't know who anybody was. So I'm, like I wasn't that dude. Yeah, I was the outsider. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't that dude who looked at the rankings. I was just the long, gangly, like just like awkward dude who kind of came in and just kind of made my way that summer, bro. Mm-hmm. Like fun fact, bro. Like I wear I wear a size 18 shoe now, right? Mm-hmm. In high school, I was wearing a size 21 shoe because I thought that was my shoe size. Craziest thing, bro. I'm gonna run that back. So <laughs> I was wearing size 21 shoes, bro. Size 21. Cause they felt good. I was like, oh, okay, I guess I'm a size 21. Yeah. And then when I get to Texas, you know, after I committed or whatnot, um, Nike came to the campus and said, you know, son, you're a size 18. I was like, yeah, God, I ain't no 18. I'm a 21. More than 21 two, two, three years now. Try the 18s. I was like, oh, okay, shit. Different. Man, I'm 18. Yeah. <laughs> so I was running all awkward as in high school, big ass me, just all Bro, this and man knew nothing about anything. <laughs> oh my God. I swear, bro. I just didn't really, like I said, like I was um <laughs> I remember you know, us talking about that. Nah, yeah, because we were at all the camps and uh, I couldn't get no shoes. So I sat out some, like, I, I was on an Under Armour circuit. Under Armour couldn't give me no shoes. And I was wearing Nikes. They were pissed, bro. I was wearing Nikes on the Under Armour circuit. I was never at EYBL. Oh, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you can't. First of all, that's... <laughs> it's a sin. <laughs> that is disrespectful. Nah, like, and I know how that shoe, that shoe stuff is. Like, the, the oh, big Oh, they fellas, take that serious. They take it yeah. serious. Yeah, like, and mind you, we? me not knowing nothing, I'm going to some of my AU practices. It's like, oh, all right, well, I'll just wear my Nikes. We're in Adidas team at the time. I was wearing my Nikes, and my AU coach trying to get a shoe deal, right? Yeah, we ain't yeah. had no deal. And I'm over here wearing the Nikes. He's like, yo, somebody needs to wear Adidas. Like, I don't like Adidas, though. Like, yeah. I don't want to do this. And then it was crazy, bro. I'm telling you, I didn't know nothing. I just showed up, and bro, I moved. <laughs> I don't know if you're really understanding what you just... You understand. <laughs> Absolutely. But people, do you understand? What, this man played two or three years Three size above what his real shoe size was. That's a huge difference. That's a big difference, bro. Were you double socket? Not even, bro. I was, I'm telling you, I was going out there and hoop, bro. I went from unranked to number 89 to number 10 to number two. And just uh, literally just go out there and hoop. Go do something. Hey, listen, I'm going to tell you this right now. No one knew where the hell he came from. <laughs> <laughs> no one knew where Miles came from, bro. It, it was at, He explained it. Like, he just came out of nowhere. You mm-hmm. said you really didn't like care for basketball at a young age like that. You was just doing it for fun, stuff like that. But your pops is from Queens. And exactly. we had Kimba on here. And Kimba exactly. said that New York mentality. Bro, it like, follows you everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Like, and I'm telling you, bro, like I was growing up, bro, like I was that kid, bro. I cared more about like my passions and whatnot, bro. Like, mm-hmm. I love being outside, like in nature. I love building stuff. I mm-hmm. love like, all my friends in high school was like nerds. Like those are like my boys. Mm-hmm. But I got along with the jocks. I got along with yeah. the theater kids. I got along with the football players. The people person. Yeah. yeah. I was yeah. that guy who kind of just like, yeah. you know, navigate anywhere and whatnot. And naturally, like after school, I wasn't really hanging out with the basketball players and hanging out, you know, I told you with my homies and whatnot. Yeah. And we would do stuff like that. Then as my, you know, my ascension started to rise a bit, I started to get more recognition. I hated that. Mm-hmm. I couldn't stand it because, like I said, I just wanted to hoop and go home and just do my shit, right? And all of a sudden, you got this big ass target on your back. So right. all these terms you start going to, it's like, yo, that's such and such. Oh, yo, that's Miles Turner. This isn't that. And to me, I'm just like, what's up, dude? Like, just, I'm just yeah, here. Yeah, so, like, yeah. It's crazy, bro. Really looking back on it. But the thing is, it's funny. Every time we do these podcasts, people talk about stuff like that. And what you don't really understand, you you probably do understand because you you're at, you're at the highest level and you play at the highest level. And everybody knows who Miles Turner is, but for you to be that same genuine dude and have all that speaks volumes, bro. Yeah. And that's why yeah. at the end, like I saw you when you walked in. It's like we saw each other yesterday. Facts, you know bro. what I'm saying? Like <laughs> you want to be involved with people and know people and and like have relationships with people like that because. Yeah. Just because you have all that recognition doesn't change who you were before that. It you know can. what I'm saying? It like, can. but it do, but it changes a lot of people though. And we we hey, listen, all three of us have seen shit like that. Yeah, even Hong, <laughs> <laughs> even Hong has seen shit like that. Hundred mil don't make you real, bro. Hey, hey listen, it, it don't, it really bro. Don't. It really don't. Like, and I I I give you big time props for that. You have been the same dude since I've known you. Love, bro. and you came out of like I said. You came out of nowhere and took storm. And when I tell you, Miles just wanted to block everything, <laughs> everything. That's crazy. Bro. It was crazy. I'm like, if it if it was going up, he was gonna try. If he knew he didn't have a chance of blocking it, he was still gonna try. And he was a force. Were you like super athletic at this time? 
Hell no, nah, bro. Nah. Like, I could, I could, I could dunk, but I wasn't one of those flashy dunk like yeah. bro, like Theo, like Kelly, Devin, like all them dudes going and doing crazy shit. I'm sitting mm-hmm. here two handed shit, just like you know. My coolest dunk at the time was like a little side lane. Thought I was doing something. Even them two K generic <laughs> yeah, ass dunks, yeah, yeah. like that was me, bro. <laughs> but he he was dominant on defense. I believe dominant. Him, like, he controlled. He controlled everything. So that took him to another level with everything. So big props to you. Hey, but my thing is, when was it that in high school that you took? You was like, okay, I need to lock in on this shit because I can really take this somewhere. Start talking shit. That's all it <laughs> took, bro. Yeah, that's all it took. I was mm-hmm. really. On some chill stuff, then I probably social media started to get it popping, like with us, bro. We mm-hmm. had the ball as life, we had a whole bunch of stuff. And I was never really one of those dudes that read the comments, but all my boys did. Mm-hmm. Right? Everybody wants to keep everything Miles Turner. Mm-hmm. So people obviously started doubting me and probably st- and started talking about, okay, you're going to high school, you ain't going to do shit in college, you're not going to make it to the league. And I was like, okay, bet, shit. I took it as a challenge. Anything I do, I like, I like taking little stuff like that for motivation, right? Mm-hmm. And um, you see a lot of people come out like, oh, my haters made me, and this isn't that. I'm not even on no time like that. I just genuinely, Loved like when people doubted me. I just mm-hmm. loved when people like went like didn't know I can I was capable of doing such things, and that really drove me, bro. My uh, senior year is when I started getting all the Madonna's on Americans and the Jordan and stuff, and people from my own city started hating on me, bro. And that's when I was like, "Damn, bro, like that's a real deep. thing." Yeah, no, yeah. real no shit, facts. bro. It's the worst in my the city. own city. My own high school started hating, and that like took me to a different type of motivation. Like, all right, I'm gonna show it. All you motherfuckers, like, yeah, just wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. I remember, and this is just, like I said, we keep it real rap over here. I remember, it. I saw a switch flipping you. Mm-hmm. Because at first, you you could tell you just played because you just like to play. Mm-hmm. You like you you just play basketball. And then you got this mean streak in you. I was like, okay. <laughs> this motherfucker might be a, <laughs> might be a problem. <laughs> I might have to deal with this guy over here. But hey, listen, bro. You you definitely flipped the switch, and it's a real thing when you when you get that success. No facts. It's different. Fame monster, bro. It's different. Oh my god, <laughs> it's crazy. Fame monster, the bro. fame monster, real. I want to <laughs> know. You said you didn't you didn't really like the hype and like the notoriety and stuff like that. How did you cope with that? Um, it wasn't going away, obviously. Yeah. Well, I'm not gonna cap. Obviously, you like it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. You get the attention. Mm-hmm. You know, more eyes is on you. Yeah. Like it's kind of cool. You live the life that you. Seeing movies on TV mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, bro, my family kept me grounded, bro. It's the biggest thing, bro. It's like, it isn't, I don't care it's how definitely. far you rise, and you ain't shit to us. Yeah, like my sure, boys, you see them walking in, like they keep me super grounded and super humble in everything that I do because, you know, they love to build everybody up at this level. Mm-hmm. They just kick that motherfucker down yep. and watch you fall. I'm going to tell you one thing. Everybody loves it, man. Yep. Mm-hmm. And you just said it all it takes is one thing. It can mm-hmm. be one bad night out. It can be one bad, a couple bad games. Like everybody wants to see you fall. So yep. if you have people that's there to catch you, Shit, it's easy, bro. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, we had a brief intermission. I was out here naked on my wrist. <laughs> had to add a little something. You know, Ben Cleef me. <laughs> ben Cleef me, we looking for that sponsorship, B. We all got a little something, something on. Nah, thanks. For, for sure. You Listen. know what I'm saying? Listen, you ain't got to pay us. Just give us the jewelry. Hey, yeah. That's, <laughs> listen, a I don't want nothing for you. Just throw me a couple pieces here and there. Shit. Lord have mercy. But hey, no, nah, Miles, um, who did you look up to in high school? Who, who was like, okay, I want to model my game after this guy? Bro, I mean, obviously being from the area, you know, it's, it was fun for all seven footers to step outside and shoot like dirt, mm-hmm. right? After every game, you're watching him. I watched that final series, and I'm literally going right to the backyard, like yeah. just, mm-hmm. or front yard, just working on my fadeaways and mm-hmm. all sorts of stuff. So, uh, it was, obviously, it was him. Uh, Lamarcus Aldridge was another big one, being from the area. You know, yeah, he from right tough. down the street. Mm-hmm. And then uh, KD. Everybody wants to be like KD, bro, mm-hmm. especially going into Texas. He just had a crazy aura and handle about himself that it was like everybody wants to emulate that. So, I never really like wanted to model my game after anybody. I like I, I hate it when like. Uh, Reporters ask me, like, who, who do you want to be like? Who do you want to model your game after? It's like, I mean, Respect I'm going to take bits and pieces it's from attitude, everybody, yeah. but I'm going to make it my own. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, uh, um, but like, generally speaking, those are the three that I really like watch and I just enjoy like watching them play. Yeah. You got that fade down now, shit. You was fucking us up with that this, this year. <laughs> Boy, he was, <laughs> hey, listen, he was fading the shit out of us this year. I was like, damn. That was Growing energy, up, because you always shoot though, like you always had like a little Jimmy with you. I always be able to shoot, yeah. bro. Yeah, yeah. Always, my dad really, uh, I tell you, after every practice, bro, we was out there just working on touch, bro. Touch mm. handles, all sorts of stuff. And uh, yeah, I know it always came again. Blocking shots and shooting were like my callings. Got you. Mm. Man, that's, that's a great package right there. <laughs> Definitely a great, great package. package. Hey, listen, shooter and defender. What? The rim? Yeah, that's <laughs> needs that. That is tough. That's hey, tough. so you get you get to high school, you start to take off. 
and you you're a guy who doesn't want all the you like the attention, but you don't like it because we know it's because there's a lot that comes with it. Right. But then these colleges <laughs> come calling. Yeah, let's talk about it. Let's talk about these colleges come to call in. When 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 did you first get your first letter? When did you get that? Bro, um, so my sophomore year of high school, I got my first offer from um University of Texas at Arlington. And I was ecstatic, bro. Yeah. I was like, oh shit, UTA, Mavericks, I'm right down the street. Like yeah. I'm I'm live, bro. Like I'm like, I'm I wasn't expecting to get any college offers. Mm -hmm. I told you I was just hooping just to hoop. Yeah. And my parents always told me, like, you have to be able to get to college for free because you know we ain't paying for that shit. So yeah. you know, I was they always say that when you got the talent. <laughs> <laughs> But like on a real spill, like I had some like colleges I wanted to go through for academics. Like I put like a lot of my, I got some scholarships off of just like purely my academics. And mm -hmm. I was thinking like, oh, okay, this is before all the hype and everything. Yeah. You know, my sophomore year, junior year. Um, I'm thinking, okay, I'm about to go to school and I'm gonna find a good job. I'm just gonna be a great man in society. Like I had no idea what I was really doing. And mm -hmm. then that first offer came in, I was like, cool. Then the university in North Texas in Denton, they called and I was like, all right, just gonna get some local love. Then I told you I broke my ankle. Right. All of a sudden you ain't getting them letters no more. It's mm -hmm. like people start to forget about you. You know, you ain't getting them calls. You know? mm -hmm. I wasn't ranked. I wasn't on Ball is Life. I wasn't on anybody's like projection. And I'm from Bedford, Texas. So it's not like we have like a big like eyes on us everywhere. Yeah. You know? So um finally start to hoop and then that's when the floodgates were wide open. Letters every single day. And here was the type of parents my mom was. <laughs> I had to read every single letter. Any letter, any bro, and I don't think she realized that people weren't actually handwriting these letters. Yeah, they were yeah. just little info letters. Yeah. yeah, we had buckets and buckets and crates and crates of all letters that came in, and she made me sit there and read all of them. And it got to the point where I was like, "Yo, mom, <laughs> paper cousin shit." I'm like, "Mom, like, <laughs> <laughs> I love you so much, but like, I'm not gonna keep reading these infomercial ass letters that right. yeah. we're sending to every yeah. recruit." And uh -huh. I didn't realize that's what it was until I started going to the cancer job. I was mm -hmm. like, "Oh, I didn't realize that." Everybody got, got the same, same yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, the same letter. Exactly. You talking one. about the one that said we love you and we want you to be a starter? Yeah, 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 yeah I got that one. Yeah, I got that one. I got that last week. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, bro. I had no idea. So then after uh, every school was after me, the, you know, it's funny. The only schools that never recruited me. North Carolina was one of the only schools that never recruited me. North Carolina, and then there was another one, the ACC. I'm trying to think. Um, I can't think of it all the top of my head, but North Carolina, I remember that. I got a letter from them my junior year of high school, and mm -hmm. I was live. I'm like, shit, we're in like, North Carolina. Like, I'm live. You would have went there? Probably not. Y'all wait, Jeff. <laughs> Y'all had, way, had way too much going on, bro. You know what's funny? You know, I really want to go to Duke. Duke was like the dream school. Then Jaleel committed, oh, right? And once Jaleel committed, yeah, I know Tar Heel shit. Like, once Jaleel committed, you know, he the number one player. I'm number yeah. two player. Mm -hmm. In my head, I'm like, well, shit, why would I go team up with him? Right. Like, mm -hmm. I'm trying to, I'm trying, trying to, to see him. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? So, I actually, um, I came down between Texas and Kansas. It was the last two. Mm -hmm. And um, man, everything in me, I wanted to go to Kansas. Then the, I woke up that morning, the morning of my commitment. I don't know if it was a calling from God. I don't know if it was a tap on the shoulder, what it was. Man, I looked up. The very first banner I saw when I woke up was one of my Texas banners when I was a kid. I just looked at it. I said, man, I'm going to Austin, man. Shit, I don't know. What, what, are, we, what are we doing here? That's tough. That's crazy. Bro. That's tough. It's crazy, bro. I remember looking up, waking up, literally seeing that banner, a little pennant. I was like, yeah, I'm going to Texas. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's elite. I feel like you knew you wasn't leaving home though. Nah, bro, bro. I start. I took all five of my visits. You know, Where'd I really wanted to. You go? So let's see here. I went to Ohio State. Uh, you know, D'Angelo, me and him was you know was, was tight back then. He was trying to get mm -hmm. me there. Um, Oklahoma State, um, Kansas, Texas, and damn, what was the fifth one? That school gonna be hot. That's gonna hurt. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's gonna, they gonna be tight. <laughs> Um, and I'm trying to forget the fifth. I forgot the fifth one, but yeah, I took all five of my visits, bro. And I had a great time at every single visit. I looked at, you know, I took everything in and mm -hmm. uh, nothing really beat like Austin, bro. Just a city. You have a college in like a city in one, whereas most yeah. of these colleges are in the middle of bump and it's mm -hmm. just a college yeah. town. Bro. Yeah, nah, bro. You know, my mom was also telling me, that Miles, you're a Texas kid. So, you know, even when after you get done with college, you'll you always be able to have the branding of the University of Texas or be a sure. Texas kid. And, Bro, everybody knows what this means. Like, no matter yeah. where you go, like, oh, everybody's yeah. gonna know what that means, Thanks. bro. Worldwide and number one endowment in the world, We've got our own network. Like, there's a whole bunch of benefits that come with being like a Longhorn. And that's stuff I'm not thinking about that young. Mm -hmm. But then, as I got into it, you know, had the parents that I had, they was like, oh, yeah, man, it's, it's no brainer. No too. brainer at that yeah. point. I guess that's, I mean, it was pretty much the same thing for me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you go to North Carolina, you're from North Carolina. Why the hell would you not right. go? Exactly. Right. You know what I'm saying? But now that's big time, bro. What, what was the, how was the, rec so it was pretty much you. It wasn't 
Texas in general, like the no, coaches man. or anything. It was just Texas was late to the party, bro. Honestly, they really? um, they didn't really start recruiting me until like maybe, maybe halfway through my senior year. Random, bro. Like, I mean, they'd always kind of like showed interest, but they never like actually had the coaches come up see my practice and stuff until a little bit later. Wow. And I mean, I'm not it was sure. Rick Barnes, right? Rick Barnes, yeah, Rick Barnes at the time. Yeah, Rick Barnes at the time. Oh, God. And then, <laughs> and then, um, oh, God. Yeah, bro. But they, you know, that that was probably one of the coolest things about being recruited, bro, was having all these coaches come to your gym, bro. Yeah. You had oh, the coach man. Calipari, you had the, uh, you know, Shuseskis, and obviously, mm-hmm. like, uh, just other people that would come through, like, big names. So, bro, people are skipping class. People are running to the it gym. It was crazy. Yeah. It was madness, bro. All just like, just to try to shake his hand and be it around. It was crazy. And, Bro, you're like the provider of that. Mm-hmm. And that's a big responsibility, but cool at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of the main reasons I committed late was to try to see my niggas eat, bro, for real. Mm-hmm. There was mm-hmm. nobody on my team that was ever gonna play like D1. Maybe mm-hmm. one person mm-hmm. who was ever gonna play D1. But like, what if, you know, Coach K came in, but he knows some D2 coach or some D3's cool and was like, man, I saw this kid at Miles Turner's practice and he was killing this, this, and that. You might really be able to use him. So if I wait till the last minute, if I were committed, it's over. No one's coming. Right, ain't nobody coming to the game. Yeah. If I wait till the last minute, it was me and Devontae Graham. We were the last two to commit. And um, I had more and more coaches come to my school. And then two, two of my uh, guys that was on my team actually got scholarships off that. Because it's, it's that viewership, bro. Like, that's the thing that people don't think about, you know? I was about to say, the fact that you thought about that at that age... Cause I don't know, like for you, you committed earlier. Like, yeah, yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> but it was yeah, it was different. I was, I was tired of talking to coaches. Yeah. Like I was tired. I was tired of the whole process. I was just like, I know where I want to go. Like, there's no point in me just doing this anymore. But it was different for me. Yeah, I had guys getting recruited. Yeah, they didn't need me at that point. That is, very you know true. what I'm saying? Yeah, I was already like, nice. I, they, yeah. my team was. Not, I had Harry Jones. Oh, stack, bro. Yeah, yeah, I was stacked. Stacked. Yeah. They didn't need me. They was coming anyway. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I was getting re-recruited <laughs> if I was to. I could have decommitted yeah. somewhere else. But. When did you like start getting ranked and whatnot? Like, or because oh, I was bro, young. Yeah, but exactly, bro. You, you, you came into it like real. Can you talk about that real quick? Just like coming into it like real young and having attention on you at such a young age, bro. Yeah, like, it was it was tough. I mean, I've talked about it on here before. It was a hard thing to to deal with. And you caught it late. I caught it early as far as like I was number one in the country my freshman year. Mm. I couldn't handle it. Mm. The, and not even for the fact of the attention. I didn't go nowhere. Like I was hoops, home, right? eat, that's it. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was nothing big for me. But the biggest thing that I could not handle was the target. Mm-hmm. I couldn't handle the target on my back because every, I was the hunter at that, that yeah. point. Mm-hmm. Before that, I was just hooping and I knew I was nice and I was just having fun and I dominated. Like, I, you couldn't tell me I wasn't the nicest motherfucker out there. I, I just had fun doing it. Yeah. And I was just playing basketball. But other than that, I mean, once I was number one in the nation, I'm like, it's like I had no more friends. Mm. I feel like I had nobody who supported me and wanted Damn, to help real, me get yeah. there because I was there. Yeah. Like, I, I couldn't go nowhere. I couldn't go no further. I was the guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I felt like I was on a lonely island. You know what I'm saying? And then next just, thing you know, it just... Guys caught up. Guys were the same level, and I wasn't number one no more. I was hunting again. I want to know. This I want to know. So, like, obviously now I run pretty much like all the Nike grassroots camps, the right. Nike Academy, EYBL, and stuff like that. And I see how these guys like are so like some people don't like each other. You yeah. know what I mean? And they be trying to be at their neck. But then some people all buddy buddy be taking it easy. Interesting. Ain't it? How was it with y'all? You know what I mean? Man, the psychological like warfare different. was real, bro. Psychological warfare is definitely a real thing. Um, you know, for me, bro, I feel like I was kind of so happy go lucky that like people kind of sense that. Mm. And they're just like, oh, like he's very unassuming, like, oh shit, we ain't worried about him, like type of thing. And I think that's how people view me. Like the, the dominant bigs in our class were like Cliff Alexander, mm-hmm. like just crazy dunk on every yeah, dunking on body, every like box. like. Jaleel, obviously, Carl, yeah, Carl Towns. Mm-hmm. And, the um, bigs we had was nuts. Yeah, those nuts. were probably like the top, and myself obviously was like yeah. the top dogs, I would say. And I never really went at it like, I'm coming for his neck, or I wanna, I, I gotta like beat him in the ranking. Yeah. For me, I'm just going out there hooping, bro. Like yeah. I know at the time my offense wasn't as ahead as my defense. Yeah, I know that like, okay, y'all, I might not be able to score, but y'all aren't gonna score on me. Right. And like my mentality kind of like carried me through. Then off the floor, yeah, I was I was happy. I was happy. Go look, I was buddy buddy to everybody, trying yeah, to get yeah. some conversation here and there. But it's hard, bro, because you don't like I said. I didn't know anything. I don't know anything mm-hmm. about anybody. All I saw was balls, life, mixtapes, and some of the guys. I know anybody's personalities. 
So on the bus, I was kind of like the quiet one. I didn't really like just like really you know rap with anybody until we were actually in the fire together. You yeah. Know? Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. It was a, and you let me know if I might I might be wrong. As far as off the court, our yeah. class got along. Everybody was yeah, bro. really well, bro. We had like, personalities. We had yeah. personalities, and we like Stanley, mm-hmm. me, Justin. Jaleel, Tyus. Justice Winslow. Justice, Justice Winslow. Winslow. Yeah. Like, bro, we just had a good group of like, just good dudes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, any t- if I see anybody from our class, it's like we, like I said, we just saw each other yesterday. Yeah. And we had great relationships, but when it got to on the court. And then it was like. It, 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 was, it, was, it was It was different. next. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody, everybody, listen. Everybody knew. Yeah. Everybody knows. All right. He's number two in the nation. I gotta go at him. Yeah, mm-hmm. he, like he he has to be the guy that I go at. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, I had rivalries, and maybe they didn't think so, but in my head, mine was Justin Jackson, who was my teammate. Right, Justice Winslow, Kelly Oubre. Yeah, you and, and Kelly used to go at it. Oh, me and Kelly. Yeah, yeah. Listen, <laughs> I don't know if Kelly like me too. to this day. <laughs> they got heated hey, sometimes. Listen, I don't know if Kelly like me to this day, <laughs> but. Hey, I, I mean, I've talked to him, but we like those are my guys that I I had I went at every single time. They yeah. same vice They're versa, yeah. and but I have respect for him for that because yeah. why would you want somebody to just give you anything? Like he named off his Cliff Jalil, yeah, um, Carl oh. Towns. Like it was a crazy amount of talent in our class, which was crazy. So mm-hmm. it was it was. It was fun, bro. Yeah. It was fun. But you say, bro, it's all love at the end of the day. Because when you see these guys, like, bro, we're going on our ninth year in the league, bro, right, which man. is crazy to you're think about. Well, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> you're right. A but couple like, of guys had to stay up loud. Being, what, 20, 27, 28 years old, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. for kind sure. Of coming into this, like, you know, being in this industry, you're seeing guys that were with you when you were 17, 18, you know, 18 years old, and still see those faces, bro. Like, you got to show love. Bro. You got to. We're still doing it. Bro. Yeah. It's That's big time. So, Miles. You said you woke up, you looked at a longhorn and sorry, my finger, longhorn. <laughs> and you said, I'm going to Texas. Mm. You get to Texas. Oof. Where's your welcome to college moment? Welcome to college moment, bro, was the practices. Cause you have to realize about the team that I walked into, bro. Uh-huh. <laughs> bro, we have five six elevens. Five. Six elevens, including the walk-ons. Yeah, five six elevens, bro. Hey, listen. Huge. Other than Carolina, they were second to big man. Huge, bro. We were a big <sighs> lineup, gigantic team. And mind you, the team I came into, we were very successful the year before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they didn't. Uh, they didn't go too crazy in the tournament, but they had a everybody returning mm-hmm. with all that experience, and whatnot. And so, you know, you got guys that are there who obviously have dreams and aspirations. Now mm-hmm. you're coming in as this kid on this high horse and the number two in the nation. Mm-hmm. Exactly what you're talking about. They look at it as like. Oh shit! This kid's gonna take our spot. Right. Yeah. You know, he's gonna take our playing time. Mm-hmm. Mind you, again, I didn't look at it like that. Right. It was more so, "What's up, guys? Like, hey, yeah. I'm happy yeah. to be here." Like, yeah. type of thing, you know. And those practices were rough, bro, because like you know, I had Cameron Ridley, Prince eBay, you know, Connor Lammer. These are all guys at the time that were heavy hitters in college. And mm-hmm. again, I watched them play, but I didn't really know like yeah. what it was about. And those practices were intense, bro. We had a real military ass like type of practice. You up, you go over what we call the circus. It's just a, a circuit of nothing but like Jacob's Ladder, like sled pushes and in the middle of practice, but we can be in a play. You fuck a play if you're running over there oh, and doing that shit. Like <laughs> You missed a grant pod. Oh my God. We've heard. Oh <laughs> it's lethal with Rick Barnes. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Rick is a... Uh, I'm not even going to talk about him, bro. That's not the point. But yeah. like just the, the University of Texas experience, bro. I love the city. The city was unreal, bro. Like mm. I have a house down to this day. Like I love Austin so much. Mm. I love the campus so much. I had a great time. Basketball was rough, bro. Mm-hmm. I I didn't, I barely played. You know, I played probably, I think I averaged like 18 minutes a game. I only started like four or five games. The world welcome to college moment was my entire college career, honestly. Like I I went out there and just like you said, people put you on a high horse. I come out, but my first game, I had like 16 points. And you know, we're playing against lesser competition, yeah, like yeah. North Dakota State or mm-hmm. something like that. Like 16 points, like you know, like eight rebounds, like four or five blocks, suit section wearing a bucket hat, you know, I committed in a bucket hat and shit. Like it was like cool. Yeah. That hype can like take advantage of some people, but it didn't really take advantage of anything for me. I mm-hmm. just went out there and I just wanted to play. Then I started getting held back a little bit. Mm-hmm. And that's when I was like, huh, what's going on? Like I'm thinking it's me. Like, man, do I not understand how to play at this level? Do I understand the games? I go out there and I was told, listen, bro, you need to go out there, you need to shoot a turnaround shoulder, a turnaround jumper over your right shoulder, you need to shoot a hook shot. That's it. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Well, I'm gonna do this as well. Yeah. Go out there, start shooting threes. 
that's a problem. It's like, no, 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 no. We told you right here. Mm -hmm. So I'm already like starting to be pigeonholed like right yeah. away, right? And I, I I hated it. And you know, at that time, I'm kind of like a yes sir, like kind of guy, like, yeah. okay, okay, I'm gonna just do this. Then I started showing more and more stuff. And this is when I almost lost it, bro. I really was at my breaking point. We were in the middle of a practice, bro. <laughs> I played the five the entire year. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, I got moved to the four this practice. And mind you, in this practice, there's about 20, 25 NBA scouts, mm -hmm. whole line of scouts, right? So I don't know any of the plays at the four, right? I f up like two, three plays in a row. Bro, Rick looks over the sidelines and is like, why would you want to draft him? He can't even remember a play. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, what is going on? That's when I started to realize the business of basketball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm told you I'm happy, go lucky the entire time. Then I really started to realize, oh, shit, millions of dollars are starting to come involved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to realize that, like, you're an asset to this school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, if you leave, um, you know, they'll come up, they'll come up against the next like big recruit. But if you're a number two recruit coming to a school like that, especially as big as Texas, mm -hmm. that's eyes, that's viewership, that's yep. ESPN, that's like a lot of stuff. You leave, some of that starts to go away. Mm -hmm. So I really felt like I started to get held back a little bit. And mm -hmm. then the year uh, came about, I had some good games, had some bad games, good games, bad games, never got consistent. The game that fucked me over was we played against Kentucky mm -hmm. and our starter point guard, Isaiah Taylor, got hurt. He's out most of the year, he was a head engine. Yeah. Bro, you, you, remember, you remember that Kentucky team, obviously. It was Devin Booker. It was Carl oh, Town. Yeah. The Billy platoon Collins system. Sign, platoon oh, system. Tyler Eulis. Like, all sorts of, like, like, dudes. They were stacked, bro. And I had a bad game. And we played interrupt. Like, it was crazy. Yeah, body, yeah. But, and then afterwards, Calipari came out. I was like, yeah, they don't play him because then maybe he's scared. That pissed me the fuck off, bro. That pissed me off. They wow. said they're trying to hide him. Maybe he's scared. And that's when I was at my breaking point of, like, man, like, do I, do I got to stay another year to get better? Do I got to transfer? Like, I wasn't even thinking NBA. Mm -hmm. So the season that started to end comes to a close. I'm kind of at this point. I'm going to frat parties. I'm like, basketball's <laughs> over. Like, I'm, I'm, happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Respect. Bro, get a call like two days later. I was like, all right, pack your bags. We're getting you out of there. I was like, what? Like, I'm thinking I'm about to be ready for you know, next semester. Like, I'm saying the school is like, nah, I'm about to start training for the league. I was like, the league? Did you see the season I just had? Like yeah. the league? Mm -hmm. And what I was taught was like, and it's very true, you have any signs of potential, you gotta go. You yeah. gotta get mm -hmm. them out of there, bro. Like, and I played my cards, busted everybody's ass in draft workouts, bro. Everybody, like I had great workouts, bro. The, like everybody has someone to chase you're talking about. Mm -hmm. My manager chase is Frank Kaminsky. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Anytime, any workout he was in, I told my agent, yo, I want to. I want to be there mm -hmm. anywhere he's at because he's college player of the year. Yep. He won it that year. He too. won. Yeah, he, he won, won it that year. year. He was cooking. So yeah. he obviously had all his accolades and whatnot. Yep. So I was like, all right, Hunter, Hunt it type stuff. I want to go wherever he's at. Mm -hmm. And once I started playing against him, Indiana was obviously was one of my best workouts. Obviously, but uh, went there, had a good workout against him there and other places, and I just really committed myself to the process. Then, and you know, the rest is history. I'm going. That's a great story, but I'm going to stop you right there, go just because it. you had a great. Workout at Indiana don't mean you get drafted by. True, it. very but true. What the hell we've been, <laughs> what we have witnessed on this podcast? No, thanks. Motherfuckers just be drafting people. They ain't even work out. Mm -hmm. And That's this true. shit is crazy. Literally. How many workouts you do, Miles? I actually did. I, I did the harder way, bro. I did nine workouts. Nine. I did nine workouts. I know a lot of guys do fifteen to twenty. Mm -hmm. I did nine. I did it on purpose. I could have very easily. I was projected to be a lottery pick. I could have very easily did two or three and shut it down. I had something to prove, bro. I told you I had a terrible, well, not a terrible year, a, a terrible year by number standards, right? Yeah. So I was like, all right, well, fuck it. I'm just going to go in all these workouts, try to show who I am. And I did, I did three or four individual workouts, which are the hardest workouts. Oh, my bro. God. I've seen a couple You of versus you, bro. It's terrible. It's hard, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and then the rest I did, like, you know, there's like three or four yeah. other guys there. You know? Those mm -hmm. are tough. So would you say Indiana was your, I mean, clearly you went, we skipped around, but you, he went to the league, clearly. <laughs> but would you say Indiana was your best workout? Um, I had a really good workout in Charlotte. You know, Patrick Ewing was, was running that workout. I remember mm -hmm. that vividly. And uh, it was an individual workout. I had a really good workout there. And I thought I was going to get drafted there. I really did. Like, um, I remember to this day, everybody who went ahead of me. Like, I, like it was one of those things where I thought I slipped a little bit, but there was also more politics and all that type of shit. You know, yeah. I was mm -hmm. involved. What number did you go? I went 11. 11. 11. 11. 11. 11. Name the 10. <laughs> all right. So first pick was Carl. Uh huh. Second was D'Angelo. Yep. Third pick was Jaleel. Fourth pick, Blinken there. Fourth pick. Fifth pick was Mario Hazonja. Mm -hmm. Sixth pick was Stanley. Mm -hmm. Seventh pick was Emmanuel Moutier. Eighth pick, 
uh, who was the eighth pick? Willie Colley Stein, way eighth pick. Ninth pick was Frank Kaminsky. Tenth pick was Justice Winslow, and I was number eleven. Frank went where? Frank went to went Charlotte. To Charlotte. Frank got went to Charlotte. Yeah. 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 Charlotte. Who was the fourth pick? I'm trying to think. That's the first thing that I blanked on the fourth pick. But yeah, those are those are everybody that can remember. Like, so right you were sick about head. Charlotte. Chris asked Brzingis. There it is. He was oh, the fourth yeah. pick. Oh, yeah. Brzingis yeah. was the fourth yeah. pick. Yeah. No, I was, I was sick about Orlando. I thought I was going number five to Orlando. And mm-hmm. I like my agent said, we're going number five to Orlando. This is that. You had a great workout there. They're, they're excited about you. I was like, all right, cool. I'm at the table, like in the green room. I'm mm-hmm. like, all right, hell yeah, sit. With number fifth pick, the Orlando Magic, Mario has owned you. I'm like, who the fuck is this? Like everybody's looking around like, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of pissed because you know how they do that. You're like, they bring in some European prospects who we don't really know about. Yeah, right. you know for sure. I mean? Oh my God, it's always I, a random one. Yeah. For every year, bro. And then I seen the highlights, all right, then you fly a little bit, you yeah, get dunk, yeah. you shoot a little bit, it's all right, you're pretty nice. And then, still pissed, obviously. Yeah, yeah for But sure, then I dropped yeah. to 11 and, you know, um, blessing in disguise, bro. I did not need to go number 10 to Miami. Mm-hmm. I did not need to be 18, 19 years old in Miami. Yeah. Like, I don't know how Justice did it. Like, it's... That's a, that's a tough place, bro. I understand they have a culture there, but that's another thing people don't realize, bro. When we get drafted, we are kids, bro. Yeah, mm-hmm. we are kids, and, and like trying to get into a grown man's business. So like some this. of these cities you go to make or break your career. Yeah, like for real. Like yeah. it was the best thing for me to go to, you know, a blue collar ass city mm-hmm. and just grind it out for sure. How talk about your green room experience? Mm-hmm. How 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 is that? Like talk about the day. What 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 leads up to that? Man, it's funny how your priorities shift so much from looking back on it. You know what my favorite part of that day was? And the, my real I made it moment, not that I'm in the NBA, not that I'm sitting here, I could pop, potentially make millions of dollars. You know what I made it moment was for me, the validation of getting a, a blue f-ing check, bro. <laughs> getting a blue check, bro. I'm sitting in that room. I FaceTime my boys. And say, hey, look at my Twitter, bro. Go look at my Instagram. <laughs> hey, bro, hey, wanted a wild. blue check. Bro, oh dead my ass. God. It was like a, it yeah. was a stamp. Yeah. But now, yeah, now you can just pay for now, it. Yeah, yeah. But back then, bro, like that was like, a big deal, bro. Like, no, there was no NIL. There was no none of that. Like, a getting a blue deal. check was like, oh, I really made it. Like, yeah. you, you are verified. Like, yeah, yeah, for sure. So that was a big thing. And that happened in the green room. And I'm live about that um i mean the experience is dope i got the experience with my family bro the ones that was there from the very beginning when, mm-hmm. whether things were great when things were bad when my ankle was broke like when i don't know i just had bad days those are the ones that were there with me so it was none um they, they're the ones that should be able to experience that mm-hmm. so just seeing other families bro get drafted that was big for us too bro just like seeing that like you see people not like crying but you see like a you know, mothers get emotional or like, you know, little brothers, little sisters looking up to like to their sibling. Like that shit's dope to me, bro. Like it's a real we made it moment mm-hmm. as opposed to like an I made it. And that's what's beautiful about the green room to me is that you actually get to like just be in there with other families who had that same goal or grind it just like you did. Yeah, that's tough, bro. That's mm-hmm. tough. I mean, listen, that was a dream of mine. Didn't happen. <laughs> but uh, just to, because I don't think we really talked about that. Like nah. just, to, just to, the feeling of it because it's a real thing. We all think about, I want that feeling of being a green room, having my name called, walking up there, shaking the, uh, Adam Silver's hand, and just feeling proud, like your yeah. family right there with you. And I know that was a big feeling for you. How many people are in the green room? Uh, I think, who are they invite? It's like 20, oh, 20? 20, it's like 20 something, I think. Yeah. You know, There's obviously 30 slots, but yeah, you know, yeah. stuff yeah. gets you know, dicey through 20 through 30. Definitely get like, dicey. For real. I know you into uh, fashion. Tell us about like where you, well, first of all, tell us about like your outfit for draft night and well draft night and how it came together and stuff like that. I know um, brands be coming at, yeah. at y'all get free watches. Bro. Yeah, artists. free. You see the jewelry and shit, it's like, all right, we're gonna need that back, but we got it. Like <laughs> you know, <laughs> can't have it. You you're thinking you're really doing something, back? bro. Um the process was fun, bro. I work with Alba. Um, you know, uh, my girl Joanna out in uh, LA, she's the one who did my draft suit, still work with her to this day, you know, when every time I need, you know, some, you know, a function or something like that. I mean, she's, she got me right, bro. I did like a, I want to be like different, bro. Like I've always, everybody says I want to be different, but like I want to like do some different things. Like I wanted, I wore a white, like a white blazer with some purple pants and these loafs. And uh, I think I had like a, like a purple plaid up underneath and like just different like details and like my uh, lapel and all sorts of stuff. Like. Looking back on it, bro, I got roasted so hard. Some of that's like some of the stuff on draft day because of my haircut, bro. I ain't always had these shits, bro. Like, uh-huh. I had the nutty professors for a little bit. Like, <laughs> like I had to get, I had to get my thing uh, my clip. stuff right. <laughs> I was waiting on you. I was waiting Play on the you. clip. But um, 
No, nah, man, the drip was there, bro. The drip was definitely there. You know, the fashion thing is so funny to me, bro, because like you were a really, sweatsuit guy. Yeah, I, I used to be a sweatsuit guy. Mm -hmm. Like, especially that was the liveest thing. You go to all the Nike camps, you get all the free gear. That was the best part about the Nike camps, by the way, is getting the gear. For sure. Bro. Everybody knows. <laughs> For sure. It, man. <laughs> I used to wear the same pair of shoes to school every day, bro. I had some black Chuck Taylors, bro, because I wore a size, I told you, like a 21. Yeah, 21. Yeah. Yeah. It's all I could, it's all we could like. You know, find at the time, find. and I don't know that shit was dope. But um, man, I think just overall great experience. Mm -hmm. It's so funny because I just know Miles is the sweatsuit guy. Mm -hmm. My man just always wears sweatsuits. Now yep. my man got style. He out here. <laughs> hey, he was in. He was booty. in Milan. He was in Milan. Sure was bro. Hey, hey, got the drip. I'm like, <laughs> damn. Look what my man. My man growing up. Now he got that bag. <laughs> <laughs> it's hey, the money changing. Hey, right? listen. Hey. <laughs> You got that bag. <laughs> we gonna get to the bag. <laughs> you know, we like to talk that bag talk. I heard you, bro. The That's fashion game is different, bro, because people don't realize how many doors that opens, bro. For no real. Facts. I'm, I'm gonna keep it a stack. I didn't really give a shit about fashion. I didn't mm -hmm. know what a Von Dutch or the Gucci, like I knew, you know the big brands, Gucci, Louis. Mm -hmm. yeah. I didn't know what any of these brands were. I'd always had a kind of a sense of style, but I didn't know what was behind what. Going to Milan definitely changed my perspective on all these things, bro. I used to kind of laugh at the guys who tried extra hard, like, mm -hmm. to put, you know, fits on. You see guys like Coos or Russ put these fits on. But then you realize, damn, bro, you don't realize the game behind that. Just by you going to Milan and going to some of these houses and meeting some of these people, bro, think about how many people you're putting on, right? My little sister's a model. She's yeah. starting to get into the model game. Just by me going to Milan and meeting some of these executives and just shaking hands with them, they want us in their clothes, yep. bro. We are walking billboards. We are mm -hmm. athletes. So... When you go over there and you start to wear certain products, people's like, wait, he might know what he's doing. Or, oh, damn, he knows this brand? Let me talk to him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, that conversation leads to a long-term partnership. Mm -hmm. That conversation leads to you know, a deal you might be able to get for your little sister. Mm -hmm. That conversation leads to a deal you might be, to be, might be able to get for your teammates, bro. Like The fashion thing is more than just playing dress-up, bro. For yeah. sure. You are an international brand. Mm -hmm. That's why you see these people take the tunnel walk series now. Yeah, like, bro. The tunnel walk is, is a whole revenue stream right now. Listen, Hell camera's got to be there. Oh, mm -hmm. they gonna be there. Cameron's gotta be there. They gonna be there. <laughs> For sure. That's crazy. So, Miles, rookie, mm -hmm. you get drafted by the Indiana Pacers. How, like, like you said, that's a blue blood. Mm -hmm. Like, that is a basketball town, city, state, whatever you want to call it. It is basketball through and through. Yep. They got the Colts there, but the Colts are just there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, the Colts, you, you, you had Peyton and Reggie White and Marvin Harrison. You had some great players, but it's Indiana basketball. Talk about that. How, how did it feel going there? When you first got the, when you first found out, how did you feel when you went, uh, got drafted by Indiana? Breath of fresh air, bro, because you just said it. Like, I'm from Texas, but it's a football state. Mm -hmm. you know, through and through, no matter what, we do have some hoopers here, but it's always going to be a football state, bro. Yeah. That's what it is. So to go to a state that actually appreciated, like, the hoops, bro, it was, I was right at home. Honestly, like, like you can be walking down the street. Someone's just going to show you love, like, just out yeah. of nowhere. Like, they're not going to come bother you. Can we get a picture? It's like, hey, man, like, keep doing what you're doing, like, type exactly. of thing. And that real blue collar, like that stuff is real, brother. People work hard out in Indy, bro. Like it's literally, you have them winter days, bro. People clock in and clock out. And that's the equivalent to like our basketball team, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, I came in my first couple of years, you know, I was blessed and fortunate to play in some game sevens and actually like be, get that playoff experience. And I'm, all, I'm also coming at a time where, you know, PG them just came off that Miami run. Yep. And like, tw like twice, two years in a row. Mm -hmm. So basketball is at like a high, like a very high point there. Then you start to realize the history of the basketball and start to realize who's from there. Indy got a lot of hoopers, bro. We yeah. just talking about North Carolina and yeah. Texas. Like Indy got a lot of people that came out and made it, bro. And then you see, professionally, bro, I would say fans show up, but bro, college and high school, oh, bro, it's standing different. room only. They pack it out. Like the hoops at like the grassroots level is the most impressive thing to me. Really? In Indiana, bro. They take it serious there. Like how we pack our stadiums here in Texas for football, they do that shit for basketball, bro. And it's really cool just to kind of witness and experience, bro. That's yeah. dope. That's dope because I've I've been trying to, I think I'm gonna try to get to a football game here in Texas because I've heard it's just unreal, it's bro. It's different out here. Different. Yeah, I went we, to a, I went to a state championship six A football school, bro. Nut. Yeah, unreal. <sighs> That's different. Listen, you get drafted to Indiana, and you're in Indiana. You're, everybody knows who the hell from there and played there. You met. Talk about the first experience you meeting Larry Bird, Larry Legend. Bro, people don't realize how big he is, bro. 
in person. This nigga, he's all of like six ten, six eleven. Easy money. That's like crazy. even at even at like his elder age, he's still like huge, but he has a, such an intimidating aura about oh, him. Oh yeah. Very intimidating aura. And um I remember he's the one who drafted me, for people who don't know. Like he was the uh the GM at the time when I first got to Indy. And um, you know, obviously everybody knows Larry Legend and and once I get there, I shake his hand. Firm ass handshake, looks me in the eyes. All right, son, you ready to get to work? <laughs> like, it's <just> like, <laughs> like he he was a he was just such a cool dude, bro. So laid, so laid back, but he is about his business, bro. He's not into the old hokey pokey old social media, bro. It's work, bro. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I drafted you here for a reason. You know, you're here for a reason. Like, I'm here to work. He's not with all the games and stuff, bro. Very uh, very serious guy, intense mm-hmm. dude. And you can tell he's from the old school. Yep. You know what I mean? Just mm-hmm. with the mentality. Man, I'm gonna hey, tell you right now, on, folks God. be listening. Hey, no, <laughs> hey for real, for real. Larry, like, for Chill real, out. <laughs> oh, but nah, bro, Larry. Um, you know it's funny. So we can go ahead and you know full disclosure. Now I'm a grown ass man, but um, my draft night, you know, after the green room, you know, you go, you do a couple interviews here and there for a couple hours, and I had all, I had three of my boys in from Texas, right? I had never been to no bar, no club, nothing. So in New York City after the draft, we all went out. We were out all night. My, I didn't know my flight was at 5 a.m. Mm. to get to Indiana for your, your press conference the next day, right? Shit. <laughs> bro, I went out. I it was torched, bro. I didn't even pack enough. I only had one shoe. Like, it was crazy. <laughs> like, crazy <laughs> yeah. stuff. Shit I sits all over the fucking room. I'm hungover as shit. And I go to this press conference, and the first person I meet is Larry Bird, bro. So I'm you know, shaking myself. Yeah. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? And, uh, and, you know, went through the whole conference. It was him. It was Frank Vogel as well. I got to give a big shout out to Frank Vogel, man. I was, that's my guy as well. You know, first coach I had. First one who really gave me a chance. And, um, you know, being around him, it made you lock in that much more. Mm-hmm. It's all of a sudden, when he walked into practice, bro, he's sitting here just like this. Every single practice. Mm-hmm. Watching every single practice every day. It made you lock in that much more. Because new greatness was in the room, bro. Mm-hmm. And you know the old saying like "real recognize real." That's one of them things, bro. Like you, you got drafted here for a reason, you know. And I wanted to make sure I put in a return on my on, on his investment. Yep. So that's big. Time. It was dope just to actually be able just to be in the presence of greatness like that and uh, know that he saw like the greatness in me. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, that's dope. Man, that's crazy. That's, hey, listen, that's a legend in itself. Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ, that's a. Bad mother, shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> what up, everybody? This is your boy Theo Pinson here, and we have a huge announcement. We have officially partnered with Prize Picks, the daily fantasy sports game, the best one out there, and you can sign up in less than 60 seconds. It is that easy. I'm gonna tell you how easy it is. Head over and go download the Prize Picks app. You pick between two to six players, and this is a skill-based fantasy game. You only play against the prize picks projections. It's simple. You pick for more or less. The best part is you can make 25 times your money. Just like AJ said, you can make 25 times your money. And also, prize picks offers discounts on Taco Tuesday and Flex Friday. And it gets even easier. You can just use Apple Pay. Prize picks is matching up to $100 of your first deposit using our promo code RACE. That means if you deposit $20, they'll match $20. If you deposit $100, they'll match $100. Listen, Profix do all types of sports. NFL, college football, MLB, and a lot more sports. Go to prospects.com slash race and use code race for a first deposit match up to $100. So you got right into what we needed to talk about. First of all, let's go ahead and get into this. What was your welcome to NBA moment? Because oh, yeah. Miles... You try to block everything. <laughs> you get to the league. It ain't going to happen every damn time. Somebody <laughs> going to catch you. Yeah. What was your welcome to NBA moment? Well, another thing I think the casual fan doesn't realize about basketball is there's really levels to this shit, bro. <laughs> you, can be real, you can be dominant in high school. And you get to college, speed of the game. Mm-hmm. Crazy, bro. Yep. You got guys that have been in college for four or five years, 23, 24 years old. You're 18. Strength. Different. Yep. Different. Now multiply that shit times 10, bro. Now you get yeah. to the league. You got guys that are 35, 34. And skilled. Skilled, grown man strength. You play these guys on 2K. It's like, man, this sucks, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck? Then you go get some real life. It's like, oh, shit, bro. Yeah. I had a couple, bro. We can get into it a bit. My From a physicality standpoint, DeMarcus Cousins, bro, was the hardest people I had to guard, bro. For real. Sacramento, like DeMarcus Cousins. Prime Cousins, bro. Like where he's down there. Banging and shooting threes, handling shit. Like I'm, I'm literally looking at, like looking at the bench, like what the fuck do I do? Like, <laughs> like for real. 
And then I probably say Marvin, uh, Marvin Williams, bro. That was another Shout one. Shout out Marv. That was another one yeah, I really like. Scully went to. No, Scully went to. Natty Champ. Legend for real. So for sure. I struggled guarding him because he was so good at that slip, bro. He would run up that screen. I think he said he slipped to a three, mm -hmm. hitting that bitch every time. I didn't know how to guard it. And, you know, I got drafted. Um, we had Yama Himni, uh, Jordan, uh, Jordan Hill, and uh, LaBoy Allen. We had some fives that were in front of me. Mm -hmm. So I was coming and playing the four sometimes. Okay. And I was wondering, I'm like, you was guarding Marv? Marv is at the Exactly, bro. They played him at the four a lot. And I'm used to guarding the rim. Mm -hmm. I'm not used to guarding the perimeter. Yeah, right. And, bro, I'm, we play them three, four times a year. And every single time, bro, they'd have to put me on it. They couldn't put anybody else on them because mm -hmm. of our, you know, we, had, we had like a height discrepancy. So, mm -hmm. bro, chasing him around was so hard for me, bro. Like, he's constantly moving. And then, the, and then it'll slip. And then it'll slip again to the basket. I'm like, like I just like, I can't keep up, bro. Smart player, too. Yeah, very Super much so. Smart. Mm -hmm. So you had Miles, I mean Marvin Williams and Demarcus Cousins. Man, mm -hmm. Demarcus is stacked. Yeah, he was bro. different. Diff. He was. Hey, listen, Diff, he, he is a different dude. So you had to go through all that. When did it? When did it click? Like, all right, I gotta lock in these defensive schemes because obviously they throwing a lot at you. You know what I mean, bro? Huh, it's it's funny because I kind of had a similar experience with my ankle. Um, my first year, I'm still very immature. Mm -hmm. Super immature, bro. Like I'm, um, I'm mature, like for my age, and like you know, I'm gonna play the business and all that type of stuff. But like, I'm a, I'm a child. I just got out of college, bro. Like I'm still looking for that itch of like doing other things, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I got hurt and I broke my, I broke my thumb. Mm -hmm. Um, I was Kelly Olynyk, bro. I remember I swiped, swiped down, and his knee came up at the same time, and I broke my thumb, bro. So I'm out like, damn, there 30 games my rookie year in the middle of the season. Damn. So I get bored at this point, bro. So I start. Going up to the colleges, went up to Butler, went yeah. up to IU. <laughs> just started kicking it there, bro. And the funniest part about it was people knew who I was, they didn't really know who I was. So when I go on these campuses, it's like, oh, who are you? Like, oh, I'm such and such, go dogs. And I think I'm on the fucking team. <laughs> right. right? <laughs> so, you know, I'm partying, I'm turning up and stuff. And then I started to realize, like, damn, bro, this shit's empty, bro. It was literally, it only took a week of me doing stuff like that. And then I, um, you know, obviously you're doing workouts. When you're hurt, you know how it goes. Like, you, yeah. you do your rehab yeah. and you watch mm -hmm. practice and you got the whole day, just do whatever. So, yeah. I'm passing time, but then we're starting to lose a little bit, bro. And we're we're nice at this point, bro. We had Monte Ellis, we had PG stuck, like we had a lot of guys. G Hill, we had a great team, like, um, and we're trying to make this playoff push. I was like, you know what? Let me start taking this shit a little more serious. So yeah. I started going home, started watching more film. I started watching more film at the practice with the guys. I started just doing one-handed shots stuff like that, and I locked in a lot more on what I needed to do. And bro, when I came back. Bad out of hell, bro. We're going to a West Coast trip. Uh, to this day, like, it's a blessing for me. I've never had to, like, play in the G League. I've mm -hmm. always played. I was packing my bags to go to the G League. We're about to go to West Coast trip. And it's, it's crazy how God works in mysterious ways, bro. Yama Mahimni, his, uh, his back went out. Um, the boy Allen, his knee uh, flared up. Jordan Hill broke his finger in practice the day before. We have no fives. Mind you, I'm about to go to Fort Wayne. I'm literally packing my bags in the car. I'm about to go to Fort Wayne. And to go on before the West Coast trip comes, I'm still, I'm fully healed, but I'm not really like there yet. Yeah. Said, yo, Miles, we need you. I was like, okay, all right, come on, cool, let's go. Man, I've never really started like that. I don't know nothing, none of the mm -hmm. schemes, nothing, bro. We get out there, bat out of hell, bro. Mid-range pick and pop. First game against Denver, I had 25 points. Next game against Golden State, I had 30. Then that was my game. Next game was against DeMarcus Cousins, my home. Play the clips. <laughs> For real, bro. That West Man, Coast was trip was crazy. crazy, bro. And I never looked back from there. I started damn near every game the rest of the season. Started in the playoffs by game two. And, uh, bro, like, block. I think I like averaging like four and a half blocks or something like that, or three or four, whatever it was. And it was game seven against Toronto, bro. We Toronto was a crazy series at that time. That was a real, like, wake up moment to me of, like, okay, bro, like, you're not in college anymore, bro. Like, mm -hmm. this, this NBA franchise that drafted you actually needs you to come out here and perform. Yeah. So, Man, that was the at that time of breaking my thumb really like made me reevaluate everything. It's crazy. That's big time. That's you done been to some Miles. You've been in some big time playoff series. Yeah. Big time playoff series. You come you came into a team that went against Miami with Bron D. Wade and Bosch. Yep. Yeah. Oof. Boy, they done been through some real battles. Yeah. And you coming into a team that's trying to get back there and take the next step. Yeah. LeBron went back to Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was going there, bro. I knew it was going there. Damn. 
It was just, yeah. Brian went back to Cleveland. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Yep. Let's talk about it. How, how, I, I don't really know what to say. Just talk. You got to tell sure, us. Bro. Uh, you were there. Absolutely, bro. What, 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 it, what, it, what, what was it? Bro, you're just witnessing greatness. The fuck you mean? Like, that is like, <laughs> yeah. bro, I really was one of those guys who, I wasn't a LeBron hater, but I was like, man, okay, he, 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 Bron, he cool, and he ain't Kobe, and he ain't this, yeah, and that. Yeah, yeah. So I actually played against this, bro. Mm -hmm. yeah. One of the smartest, smartest motherfuckers I've ever played against, bro. He doesn't, his influence on the game is crazy. His vision, people don't talk about his vision enough, bro. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to score to be effective. And that's why he's able to be in the league, you know, as old as he is today. Mm -hmm. Bro, he sees things before it happens. He's, we're running a play. He calls out everything we're about to do in the play. Yeah. Like, he's about the back door. He's coming off here. This, this, and that. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? This really studies the game, bro. Yeah. He knows this shit. So we went all the way to game seven, bro. This is the year, you know, Victor Oladipo was on the team. He had a mm -hmm. crazy year that year, crazy playoffs. And, you know, at the time, bro, I'm still a little bit of a spectator. I'm playing, but at that young, you're still like, oh, shit, this, this is LeBron, bro. Yeah. The fuck? And by game two or three, you kind of snap out of that. It's like, oh, yeah. that shit, no, we're yeah, 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 it's, it's, it's real. Yeah. Real. Yeah. So after that first game was under our belts, bro, we're going back and forth. Blow, blow. They would blow us out. We would blow them out. Back and forth, back and forth. Then everybody sees the iconic shot at the top of the key, bro. Yeah. Game six, bro, we thought, we, we thought it was over, bro. We thought we had the news, bro. Game yeah. six, bro. Gets the ball on the inbound, couple dribbles left against that young, fades away from the three, sinks that bitch like, oh, no. <laughs> We're going to seven, bro. We are going to seven. Or actually, I'm sorry, that was game five. Was then, game we, five. then we blew him out game six and went yeah, back to game seven. seven. Yes. That, that was unreal. But when he hit that shot, we all kind of knew, like, oh, shit. Because in your head, you win five in Cleveland, you're not beating us in Indian six. Yeah. You're not beating us in game six. Mm -hmm. It's not happening. What's that? That shot was crazy. Yeah, Please, bro. To witness it too. There's a viral clip of me just sitting there just, just like defeated, <laughs> bro. Like, I'm just like, damn, bro. Yeah, That's man. tough, bro. Yeah, man. I mean, it's you were on the wrong end of it. Yeah. Yes. But it's something you'll never forget. Like the stories that you like, it's built the player that you are today. Just going through those type of battles. Mm -hmm. You can't, you can't replicate that anywhere else. You know what I'm saying? So Hey, what shit? Kudos to you. You was in those battles and you was fucking it's grinding, fun, bro. It's I mean, fun. shout out to Vic too, bro. Yeah, Vic was man, he was killing that series. Killing that oh, series. My oh my god! god. Yeah, I want to. I want to know about your experience with Paul George. Sure. PG thirteen. Hell yeah, bro. that's big, bro. Who was your? Who was your? Who was your vet when you first got there? Uh, well, my official vet was like Jan Mahimni because you know he was one of the centers. He would mm. look out for guys, but I really had a I had a locker room full of vets, bro. Honestly, yeah. the team I went into it was an old because they team. they all been there. Yeah, exactly, yeah. bro. Bro, I C J Miles, you know he's from Skyline High School here in Dallas. Yep. C J Miles, that was Love one of my big vets, bro. Uh, George Hill, you know, was my teammate again last year. It was a real yep. full circle moment. He was in there as well. And he had Jan. He had Rodney Stuckey, bro. I told you Monte Ellis, P G. Bro, Chase Budinger. That was another that was another oh, random man. one. Bro. Chase, Chase Budinger. Jesus Christ. Yeah, bro. Played a clip. <laughs> <laughs> bro, turned out to be a hell of a volleyball player, bro. Like, I didn't realize, like, volleyball he's was- He's playing volleyball right now? Bro, he's, like, one of the best volleyball players in the world. Dang. Yeah. Legitimately. He came out of, like, Played Arizona playing, like, <laughs> volleyball, bro, and just did basketball. Do it. That's why you see him. He got on that damn bounce, bro. It was all from volleyball. That's, man, that's crazy. crazy. Yeah, bro. You learn something new every day. No, yeah, no. for real, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, but um, no, I had a lot of vets, bro. A lot of guys took it. Even my second year, Thad Young was a big, like, big one of my big vets. Shout out Thad, bro. Al Jefferson, man. big Al, bro. There's another one of you my. Play with Al too. Sure, bro. I played with a lot of people, bro. Big Al, bro. I was cold. God. Yeah, Sorry. man. He was cold when he was work, bro. Hey, listen. Yeah, he was cold when he was I don't got buckets. <laughs> you sure Al wasn't busting your ass in practice? Yeah. Hey, shit show, bro. Al had some shit on him. Yeah, bro. Damn. But, uh, great vets, bro. Honestly, I, I had some great vets who helped me because, bro, my vets, they weren't, they were come. They were from that old school, bro. For real, mm -hmm. for real. Like, you were bullshit and they was going to call you out. Yeah. It, it wasn't no, like, uh, they were in win now mode. It's going to be okay. Yeah, yeah. no. It's mm -hmm. no, no, it's going to be okay. It's like, nigga. Fuck up again. Yeah, like, type <laughs> shit. <laughs> Speaking that. of that, like, and I always talk about this with like my family and stuff like that. You was kind of in that old NBA kind of turning into yeah, the new transition. Yeah, bro. It's tra in that mm -hmm. transition. How is it now? Like, what's the difference now? Because it's night and day. <sighs> well, I mean, so the rule change is obviously big. Yeah. You know, with the hand check and the touch and stuff. That was a big thing that changed everything, as we all know. Um, 
Bro, honestly, mentality just shifted, bro. I really think social media is the game up, bro. It, it has it, it's helped, but when I say that, I'm talking about like for the younger kids, yeah. like who are starting. You're ranking fucking third graders now. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah, literally. And wow. you got guys that ride this wave of this social media, get to the league, and all of a sudden it's not the same, bro. Like yeah. this is a business, dog. Yeah. I don't Thanks. give a fuck how many followers you got. Like I don't care what you was ranked, like, bro. I, I was at the, the, the Nike camp the other day and mm-hmm. I was talking to the kids. I said, yo, who, who here knows that I was ranked in high school? Everybody's quiet. I said, exactly. Nobody gives a f- bro. Two, three years later, yep. it's over with. Nobody cares what you was no, ranked, man. bro. We're on to the next prospect. Yep. So I think they come in with not knowing that and they come up with such a sense of entitlement that, you know, you get your ass busted a couple times, bro, we're on to the next prospect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're on to the next guy. And they don't and feel bad about it either. Hell no, nah, bro. It's a bit, we're, we're about to invest millions of dollars into you, bro. Are you going to be worth it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that's kind of where the disconnect is with the younger generation coming into this shit, bro. Because it's not about the the cutesy handles and all that type of shit. Mm-hmm. The one kid I will say who who had a lot of that hype, and I'm actually really impressed he's handling so, is Jalen Green, bro. Mm-hmm. Jalen Green came yeah. in there with a lot of that hype, bro. And even before he got to Ignite and stuff, that social media stuff, yeah. and mm-hmm. watching and developing the player that he is right now, it's very, I got to even shout out, like, it's, it's actually no, really facts. impressing the hand. That shit's hard, bro. That shit's hard. I didn't yeah. even think about that because... He, he probably really, one of the first ones of like the social media guy. being yeah, yeah he was that, that guy. big yeah because uh-huh. now it's starting to be like okay these guys coming in now their social media is about is off the charts and some yeah, of these man. like some of these high schools that was at the academy they got more followers than some NBA players hell yeah for sure like, absolutely bro for sure yeah man I see it but I mean it's a uh, I understand why it's necessary to build mm-hmm. some of that height, but I also see the danger in that. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. when, you're, when you're caught up in it at 18, 17, 18 years old, mm-hmm. you don't realize what's ahead, bro. Like, yeah. You really, you just don't. <laughs> Not facts. Mm-hmm. I think it's funny because, I mean, I've, I've hooped with some guys over the summer and like, I'm like, oh yeah, he ain't even play with Dallas. But I'll bust your ass. Bro. <laughs> I think I saw something on Twitter the other day about that. I was like, bro, you don't know who no, Theo is. No, bro. Bro. Like, <laughs> hey, listen, hey, listen, bro. I, I'm a great teammate. I'm a support you, but listen. There's a reason. When that ball I'm here, run, right? I'm, hey, a, I'm here for a reason, brother. Come on, I will bro. bust your ass. <laughs> okay. Let's Yo. not get this shit twisted. But I think that comes to uh I give uh your flowers too. I, and I didn't even think about this. AJ, you make you brought up a good point. You played in two different eras. Kinda. Yeah. Like you played in that transition where you didn't know the game that your dad taught you at a young age of you shooting, that shit benefited you more now than now, you would even yeah. think about. Crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you being able to shoot back then, like everybody was like, Miles, why are you why shooting, shooting all these damn shooting threes? threes? Yep. <laughs> sure but enough. now, Every big need to be able to shoot a Man, three. what? That's going to get you everything. paid right You know there. what I'm saying? You, you shoot a, If you can shoot and you can do pick and pop, you getting paid. You getting paid. Hands down. You getting paid. Hands and down. You know what I'm saying? And you can protect the rim. Yeah. Oh, God. Every team looking for a miles. No facts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's exactly. crazy. Yeah, and it's crazy when every time we do these pies, bro, You look. I look back. I'm like, damn. That little point in your life when your dad was like, let's just work on this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just, just to separate yourself. Mm-hmm. And now look where the game has has come to. Like any Braddy T did, I'm like, why am I doing this, man? Like, I don't yeah. want to do this shit. This and that. Like, I'm a big. I don't need to. And lo and behold, bro, he had a vision, bro. Yes. It's crazy. Too. It's crazy. It's crazy because I always said, like, we all know, like, centers is at one point what going extinct. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like, that now. Back to the basket was Yeah, good, back to the basket. All that, all that shit is, like, non-existent now. Mm-hmm. So I feel like you are the pinnacle of a big man. You, Jokic, and um, Kat. Set screens and be like set yeah. screens and making sure you can like shoot outside the three point line. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's like how um, Rasheed Wallace was teaching at camp. Yep. You know what I mean? That exact thing, and you probably can break it down what they was teaching more. But mm-hmm. like the whole pick and pop and like popping out, not at the three point line, but at least Four two or three line, like steps. Line, yeah. The five point line. Give you more room to operate. Give you operate. more room to mm-hmm. operate, so mm-hmm. you catch and shoot inside. You know what I mean? Like all that stuff is important. It's levels to again, bro, because once you pop out to that five point line and come in, you put the ball on the floor, that's an extra 20, 30 million right there. Yeah. Yeah. You're able to yeah. actually pump fake and actually put the ball on the floor, make a play, or yeah. like get to the rim. Yep. Yeah. Like this, this little stuff like that, just that people don't realize will get you paid so much more, bro. Everybody watch the highlights. And I know coming into the league, like they said, you're playing 2K and shit, you see certain things. Everybody does my player, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You do 2K my player. 
And it's crazy that you know it's actually your life at this one point. Actually, like yeah. but <laughs> it's crazy. when you're seeing a my play and you're seeing the rise of the shit that people are doing, it's like, nah, bro, when you get drafted, you are either going to be a role player or it's gonna take you two to three years that you crack this rotation. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna come in as the the guy right away. And if you are, it's not gonna be sweet. Yeah. You know For, I mean? sure. <laughs> For sure. For uh, sure. we had Reggie Bullock on here and he was like, yeah. I didn't play till you're four, you're five. Not that you know what I'm saying? Like it facts. it takes a minute to crack that. Yeah, bro. Yeah. And I think uh, that was going to be my next question. How did you handle like the the keys being handled to you, being handed to you? I wasn't ready, bro. Um, quite frankly, the keys were handed to me in my third year in the league, bro. Mm -hmm. um, PG got traded, you know, my third year. I played yep. PG my first two years, and after we lost to Cleveland uh, again, <laughs> yeah. we, uh, you know, he got traded, and that's when they traded for. Domas Sabonis and uh, Oladipo. Mm -hmm. And that's when the transition of like, okay, you know, mind you, I'm 21 years old, maybe. And it's like, all right, and the keys are yours. It's your city. Bro, I wasn't ready. And mm -hmm. I let that shit slip real fast. Mm -hmm. And even going back and looking at it, it was interesting. The beginning of that year, I got hurt, bro. I, got a, I had a concussion. I was out for like two and a half weeks. So I missed the first two and a half weeks of the season. Vic is going crazy, hitting mm -hmm. game winners, yeah. average like 20 game, Domas is like 20 and 10. And I come back and almost, you know, you know how it is come back from injury, it takes a you know, game or two to get back. So I get back right, I'm back for like 10 games and I tear up my elbow. I went up for a crazy dunk and like tore my UCL, Jesus. right? So I'm slowly watching those keys that were handed to me get handed to somebody else. And that does something to your ego, bro, and it hurts a bit. Like at the time, I told you, I'm still kind of on that, I don't really care. But then as you start to watch it happen, it's crazy. It's subtle shit. Like, mm -hmm. um, in the starting lineups, right? Usually the guy that gets their name announced last, like it's that's the like guy. the guy. Yeah, you know what I mean? Guy. When I came back, I was the first one to get announced. I'm like, oh shit, I see the transition, right? Yeah. Then Vic gets hurt, my fourth or fifth year. Then Domas just turns up out of nowhere, bro. Mm -hmm. Like he he had always been nice, but he starts to get that more of that opportunity. He starts getting triple doubles, all-star, back to back. And so the keys go to him. Mm -hmm. And a part of you, you know, you kind of feel, you feel slighted because like, damn, I've been here the longest, I put in the most work. And you kind of see it as like, ah, damn, I let opportunity slip. But I never really like, I try not to look at it like that. I try to look at it as I wasn't ready for those keys yet. Yeah. yeah. Shit. I mean, knowing the things I've known and then like being the places I've been and seeing things I've seen, I know I'm ready now. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. And I think it's one of the things where a guy has a plan. Yeah. yeah, he really does, bro. Like, there's a reason for everything, okay. mm -hmm. and I think it's it's very big time of you to just recognize and for everybody to see you're sitting there watching all this happen. Oh yeah, and uh, people don't understand. It's always little shit that happens before, like during things that give you a uh, like a a sign that okay. This this is his team now. This is what the, this is where they trying to go and stuff like that. Like you recognizing, oh, I'm the first one to get called now. Mm -hmm. Okay, like yeah. for Dallas, <laughs> not facts. Who getting called last, Luca? Yeah, you right. know what I'm saying. Like okay, now we know the f going on. You know what I'm saying. So it's crazy that you recognize that and you you understand that those growing pains have made you the player you are today. Absolutely. And you, what have what haven't you been through? At this point, right? I mean, you see what it, have man. you been? Miles, I'm gonna be damn honest with you. This, we're gonna address the elephant <laughs> in the room. You've been on every damn trade. <laughs> hey, you've been on trade block since I since fucking three, four years ago, and yeah, you bro. have handled it the best I've seen anybody. Like yeah, you just come into work and you just do your job, and you you're the same Miles. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And people don't understand. Like we're people too. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And for first. you two people first. Yeah, first first bar. and foremost. That's a bar. And just talk about like, how, do, how does it work for you if you see it all the time? Every trade deadline, it's always, is it this? Is it this year? Is it next year? Like, you never know. Yeah. So how do you like go, go about your job and you handling your own business and just not worrying about it? Bro, it's, a, it's awkward, mm -hmm. to say the least. You know, my first, first time I was really in a trade room was after my third year. I had a down year that year, so that was a year, I, you know, I had like a couple injuries and stuff and not producing as much. And don't get it twisted, bro. 
you can be, have a great season, but as soon as it's a, it's a what have you done for me lately business, bro. No facts. If you're not producing, bro, it's like, all right, nigga, we'll get your ass about here and yeah. find somebody who will. That's a, you know? that's a fact. You got to understand the business side of things. So I didn't understand that at first. Mm-hmm. I thought it was a slight. I thought it was like, you know. You don't like me. We, exactly. Yeah, we're, we're, about like to get, we're about to get, you have one bad season, so we're about to get a, uh, come up off you. So mm-hmm. what I started to realize is teams are always going to look out for themselves first, for no sure. matter what. They have to, right? The people in the front office are paid by the owners and whatnot to actually do what's best for the franchise. Mm-hmm. So if I'm looking at a player and looking at like his longevity, where he's at in his career, I'm just going to dangle this fish out here, right? And see if there's anybody who wants to try to, to snap at it and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So my third, fourth, fifth year, I'm in trade rumors like, oh, I might get traded to Boston. You might get traded to LA. You, know, you might get traded to Minnesota was another one. There's all these little trades that come about. So you see it and a party is like, oh shit. So part of you kind of starts packing a little bit. You know, you have a couple yeah. bags just in case. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you gotta, you gotta, go, gotta, gotta, gotta have that go bag. That go bag is important. <laughs> just in case. Gotta have that go bag. And, um, hey. you know, it, it got hard for a second because that's when fans start talking. It's like, that's why I don't want your ass no more. And like, mm-hmm. this isn't and that. And that's when the, your own market will start to come at you, bro. And like I said, social media has done wonders for the game. It's also the game a little bit too. Because... People don't view us as people, bro. We're property. No you sense. know what I mean? The day you got entertainment props, and this is this is that. Like mm-hmm. you, you get paid millions of dollars. Shut up. Like you yeah. know what I mean? That's kind of how a casual fan just views us, or anybody who doesn't really know the game or the industry. Yeah. So back to what I was saying, if you're an asset, and I'm dangling this thing out there, like you know, like you, like I'm the big fish, right? You pay dangling sure. the fish in the pond. See what other teams are going to offer and all that type of thing. Mm-hmm. And if it's offered, that's going to break the bank. It's offered that's good enough. It's like all right, we're going to take it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And once I realized it was that as opposed to, okay, we don't, we don't fuck Miles no more. We're going to get rid of him. It eased my mind a little bit more yeah. because I know wherever the fuck I go, I'm going to ball the fuck out. Like, I'm an Not asset, facts. bro. I, you said I, I, I um, defend the rim. I'm able to shoot threes. I'm able to do things that a lot of bigs are trying to do. Yeah. And mind you, there's bigs that can do that, but there's also bigs who haven't done this for nine years. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Consistent. Like, and consistently. Who's been a starter for, you know, eight, nine years. So I know my worth at that. But it's people who don't know their worth and the people that are kind of like scared and shaky where that trade stuff can really fuck with you. Yeah. yeah. So being in the rumors every single year, it kind of toughened me up or thickened my skin because it's like, all right, I know it's not personal, but best believe you trade me and bust your ass. Like, <laughs> like, Did that, yeah, everybody has it in the back of their head. Did that help you learn more of the business? Because I always say like, I feel like a lot of the NBA guys don't know the business. No, you they know, don't. They're scared to play. So, like, with you being in those rumors, did you like try to educate yourself more about like the CBA or like why am I getting traded? All this and that. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I think that I was real go with the flow with it. Mm-hmm. You know, and looking back, that's that's definitely not the way to do it. You definitely definitely need to educate yourself on the process. No so facts. Whether you just talk to your agent, whether you actually read the CBA yourself, like you have to like know what's going on. I agree. Mm-hmm. But I'm still kind of in that happy go lucky of like, all right, if I get traded, I get traded. You know what I mean? And you know, um, being somewhere for so long, like bro, I've been in Indiana since I was a teenager, bro. If yeah. you really think about it, you're gonna form some sort of uh, some form of attachment to you yeah. where you're mm-hmm. that long. So, you know, that's the other part that I think players get messed up on too is when you're somewhere for so long, or you make great friends in the city, or you're in the community and you do great things. Oh, you good in Indiana? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey love, you, you good, <laughs> me. Yeah, but that's the stuff that I think people miss when you get traded. It's mm-hmm. not so much just the hoops aspect of it. it's a life, bro. People have, you know, families and kids and all that type of stuff. Their kids are in school. Now I have to leave them for half the year while they finish out school. It's stuff mm-hmm. like that that people don't realize. Like people first. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nah, I agree. That's crazy. I that's mean, crazy. that's, I can't imagine. I really can't imagine. And, and the thing is, too, is like you really, the, I get what you're saying, understand the business part, but I'm I'm with I'm with you in that aspect as far as like you really don't you don't want to worry about it too much. If yeah. it happens, it happens. Right. Yeah. Because mental health is the biggest thing at that point. Facts. Facts. Because it can it, it really can fuck with you. Yeah. The fact that like like right now I'm a free agent and I got a family. Right. So my biggest thing is to make sure I'm still present for my family. Yep. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's the biggest thing in my eye. Like the basketball shit, yes, I understand that. I that that is what pays the bills. That is what drives this whole thing right now. But at the same time, me providing and me t- making sure they're happy is my first and foremost first. thing. Regardless of all this shit. You're a man yeah. at the end of the day. You know what bro. I'm saying? And yeah. I think that is the thing that I like the mouse has brought up and 
everyone needs to know is just like, we got families that we need to take care of and the biggest thing is our mental health and we try not to worry about it as much. Yeah. Yes, we're human. We're going to worry about it. We're, we see the shit. We understand right. it's going to affect us a little bit. But how long you let it affect you is the biggest mm, thing. You yeah. can't let it. You can't let it linger. I told. I, I tell Colleen this all the, all the time. Like, you give me thirty minutes. I, I get thirty minutes maybe to be pissed off and mad about it. <laughs> but if yeah. I'm not, tell me to straighten my shit up. And yeah. get, hey, listen. That's real. You got a daughter who don't give a mm. damn. Yeah, she don't care about that. She's just glad oh, you. She's just that, glad bro. you. Yeah. You, are, you, yeah. Just, you know what I'm saying? So, and, and that's the thing that puts it all in perspective. And it's. It's a beautiful thing, bro. It, it, it really is. But at the same time, you're human. Mm -hmm. You see the shit. You hear yeah. the shit. And to go through it all the time and for you to handle it the way you do is big time. Mm -hmm. It really is. I commend you for that. But we got some questions for you, brother. Let's do it. We got some. We got some. Um, who we got hung? We got, we got some comparisons. First, we're going to ask you first. Shay or Luca, who has the deeper bag? <laughs> Ooh. I was just talking about Shay the other day, too. Bro... It's tough, bro, because they both had that herky jerky slow like type of like game to them. Yeah. Deeper bag. I'm probably gonna give it to to Luca, bro, because just and I'm only saying that because of like his shot, the way he gets his shots off. Mm -hmm. We're talking about just straight handles. Yeah, bro, Shea probably got him there. But as far as bag work, getting his shots off, bro, I might give it to Luca on that one, bro. The, the, the shots I've seen this man make, bro, just in pickup, not mm -hmm. even in the NBA games, yeah. just in pickup, bro. Is unreal, and I've, I personally only played against Shea maybe twice uh -huh. in my oh, okay. entire career. Okay. okay, I've seen highlights. You, know, you got to see gotta, gotta scout, play against him a little bit more. But I play against Luca yeah. a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, now we see where you're coming from. <laughs> nah, you got to play, play, play against him a little bit more. With Shea, bro, Luka Luka play against him a little bit more. Shea is super nice. <laughs> He's solid, bro. I super really, nice. Up, bro. Like the dude is the issue. <laughs> he gave us like thirty-five last year. Shit, <laughs> Luca about to get the keys to the league, bro. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, you're right. He on the cusp, bro. He on the, he on the cusp, cusp, bro. He on the cusp. Bro, there was this other question, I, bro. I got to find it. If you got any more comparisons to ask. Bro. I just seen this on Please. Twitter. Do you think, would you put Jamal Crawford and Lou William in the Hall of Fame? Bro, the Hall of Fame is dicey, bro. It's such a, you can answer it's so this tough, bro. Oh, yeah, this both them. For what they've done, <sighs> culturally, yes, bro. But in the business of this league, for what they've done, they never got the recognition they deserved. I agree. And they, that's going to hurt them in their Hall of Fame, like, you know, inductee or like any type of like yeah. honor. Like, I think culturally, we all kind of know in the hoop culture, them niggas are valid, bro. Facts. Both of them. Super. <laughs> Super. Facts. Coming off the bench, doing the crazy thing. You've seen them hoop in the summertime. But for the casual fan and for the people who are actually on that committee, I don't think they'll give them the flowers they deserve. No, I agree. So yeah, I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. My biggest thing is, my biggest thing is, if one gets in, the other has to get in. Oh, hands down, most definitely. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, because they definitely. both have pretty much the same accolades. They was. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So if one gets in, the other needs to get in. I don't think they're getting in. I think the question is. How many six men a year do Jamal have? Three, four? Yeah, he's got a three or four. A few, bro. That's a lot. Yeah. yeah. That is a lot. And it ain't like just like six, six men is a starter. Averaging 10 points. Reliable, too. A six, like, and. and <laughs> Let's go ahead and put this out there too. No, f that. Jamal Crawford is a, a Hall of Famer. I I agree. I he, agree. Jamal Crawford is a Hall of Famer simply because he chose not to be a starter. Mm -hmm. If he uh, is yeah. a starter, yeah. he's a Hall of Famer. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. That's yeah. a good point. He like everyone's like when you bring Jamal Crawford to a team, they're like, okay, that's our sixth man. Yeah. He could easily be the starter on any team he go on. Easily. So that's why I believe he's a Hall of Famer. Lou Will, I mean, he got. Two? Two or yeah, three. One else, yeah. Jamal has a better case, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, he <laughs> so played like, more. He played longer than I mean, he's still Luke. averaging 50 in Pro-Am, so. He had 51 yesterday. <laughs> he had 51 the other day. I'm like, <laughs> what the hell is your problem? Me, bro. <laughs> bro, there was a start bench cut. Uh, that I hate, was OD. I hate these, bro. I hate Ooh, this. That was an OD one, bro. That, I, 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 I had these. that. I got it. We might get to it. All right. So we have a um, question that we always ask here now. Simone, shout out Simone. She loves her shout outs. But <laughs> happy, happy birthday, too. I know it was a other day, but. Whatever. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> 
I texted her. She I texted just, her. We just, give I texted her. Her. we just giving her a shout out on the pod. But who is the, what? Who is America's team in the NBA and the NFL? Well, NFL is easy. Dallas and Cowboys. Like, stop playing. Yeah. Everybody here. Cowboy just Nation. calm down. Like, they're always going to be America's team, bro. Always. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> they bring in the most revenue in the entire world, bro. Okay, Any okay, sport. okay, okay, okay. I don't even know why to ask that. We're going to cut that out. Like, I'm from Dallas. I don't, don't want to hear this shit. I don't want to hear this on my yeah. pod. <laughs> We're not playing that clip. <laughs> Who is America's team in the NBA? In the NBA? I mean... It's kind of a no-brainer. In my, just in my personal opinion, everybody's eyes are going to go towards the Lakers. Mm-hmm. It has to be. I mean, you have the old rivals of the Lakers in Boston, but when you, I think fans overseas think of the league, they think of a couple teams, and the Lakers is always the first one to come up just because mm-hmm. of their storied history and whatnot. So yeah. I would say they're America's team. Probably controversial for me to say that for all the trade think? rumors and shit. But he, has he, answered? he has an answer. Nah. No, but that would make them the world's team because everybody overseas says Kobe and Shaq. Made- okay, so America's team. America's You're right. Interesting. Okay, okay, okay. You're right. Yeah. America's team. Yeah. yeah, it's true. It was yeah. America's team. That's America's team. You're right. Um, but I have to go America's team. Probably the Knicks then. Because everybody, especially East Coast, is going to talk about the Knicks and shit. Even if they make the playoffs or not, you're going to be talking about the Knicks. Whether they get up there or they did not. I don't even know who I said anymore. <laughs> who did I say? I don't know. I'm still going with the Lakers. The Warriors are not. Uh, they knew. People, yeah, they people, knew. people hate on Golden no, State. No, somebody bro. else at home. Somebody. Maybe now. They got a lot of fans now. But I think, I don't know, maybe because I live in LA it's too. A, yeah. Listen, it's got to be the Knicks, bro. You can't name another franchise. Yeah. I, you, can't really say, you can't really say the Warriors either, now that I think about it, because then when Braun was with the Heat, everybody would have been like, Heat. The heat. Yeah. yeah. So, it would be the Knicks or the Lakers. Knicks or the Lakers yeah. is the only two. Cause they the only two you, but wherever you live, you're going to be like, oh, the only God, reason I Lakers. say, I would say the Lakers, A, they got the championships, B, any arena they go in. <laughs> There's going to be some gold and purple. It's going to be gold and purple in that month. Facts, and man. they are going to take over the gym. It's like they got 82 home games. Bro, it's crazy, Legit, bro. bro. Bro, I remember Literally. we were playing against Kobe Bryant my rookie year, bro. Crazy that I actually, you know, Let's go and talk about that. Go ahead. Yeah, dig into that. How, how was that? Dude, unreal, bro, because my, this is farewell tour, right? Yes. yes. Bro, <laughs> we were up the entire game, right? Anytime Kobe touches the ball, ah, every single time, right? Mind you, you know, we're starting to, it's like crunch time now. And we're starting to get down, and Kobe leads an entire comeback by himself, bro. It's a single digit game. We're up, we're up double digits the entire game. He scores like four or five possessions in a row. Crowd's going crazy. Ah, right. PG comes up. It's a crazy three. Boo! Our own fucking <laughs> crowd, bro. It's a That's crazy hilarious. three. Mine, it's like I think it's like a like a a big game in the season. We're trying to make the playoffs. And stuff. Yeah. yeah. And then um, Kobe, he had missed like some fadeaway. He had missed like one of like, not a game winner, but like a, like a game tying or like mm-hmm. a, something mm-hmm. like that, right? And bro, we won the game, the entire arena, even our own fans, booing, bro. They wanted the Lakers win so bad, bro. That shit was crazy. unreal. <laughs> That's that Kobe effect. Yeah. No, I, I, I asked everybody this that been in the playoffs, been in a lot of battles. What was your, what was the team you thought had the best chance of doing it, winning it? Uh, just in my playoffs experience. Yeah. Um, oof. I mean, bro, it was hard not to. From experience, the Cleveland team was obviously crazy. They had Kyrie, they had Brian, they had they had Kyle Corbett at the time. They had mm. a bunch of Kevin Love. They had a bunch of guys that were stacked, right? So, you know, that was one of the better teams I saw. Um, another team. No, I'm saying that you played on, like that you were oh, a part oh, of. Oh, like, that was I was the, a part of. Yeah, the, the, the team with Vic, bro. That was a, that would have been our best chance. That was a year. Like when we lost in that game seven, there was a it was a goaltending uh, that call they didn't call. Braun had pinned Vic's shot to the glass that would have put us ahead or tied mm-hmm. the game, and we ended up losing losing game seven. But that whole team was me, Darren Collison, Boyan Madonovic, Thad Young. Uh, I'm trying to think who's coming off the bench. Corey Joseph was on that team. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had Lance. We had Lance. Lance signed early, like yeah, later in that year. Later, he sure did. Yeah. He signed later in the year. Um. Big Al was on that team too. Mm-hmm. Like, bro, I think that was would have been like our best chance to actually like advance and whatnot, especially riding. You know, obviously, I would have played Simonis. Toronto next. Yeah, yeah, sure would have been. Um, 
<laughs> Bron came in there. That whole remember that day, they killed the uh, they killed uh, Toronto. Then they killed Boston. Yeah, like it was no competition. Boom, boom. And we're the ones that gave them like the most fits. Yeah. So I think that would have been our best. And they won that year, obviously. But I think that would have been our best chance. Mm. Mm. That's crazy. Yeah. And I, I put that over the PG teams, bro, because we had some solid teams at PG. But like our locker room, bro, our cohesiveness was all time with that team, bro. Really, we all with each other. That 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 makes a huge difference. Mm-hmm. That makes a huge difference in the season. But last thing before we go, man, talk about the season upcoming. I mean, you got a really talented team. Yeah. You got a young core. You got a lot of promising guys. Like Tyrese is going stupid with USA mm-hmm. right now. You got Bruce e. B coming off a yeah. world championship with the Nuggets. You got Matherin, who's coming off a really good rookie year. You got you coming back healthy. I mean, y'all got a really good team, bro. Mm-hmm. And I think y'all going to surprise some people this year. Talk about what you're looking forward to this year. Bro, just leading. You know, I've been in those locker rooms where I've been led, and I've been in those locker rooms where I had great vets. I'm just looking forward to, like, leading. It's weird being the old guy in the locker yeah. room now. You know, like, I'm technically, like, the old guy, but you got guys who were born in, like, 2002, 2003, and it's like, God, I think I was yeah. in the locker room, bro. <laughs> I was in the weight room, and I was playing some Lenny Kravitz, and I was like, bro, you listen to this? I was talking to Jalen Smith. I was like, bro, he was like, who's Lenny Kravitz? I was like, what? <laughs> Like shit like that, bro. But I don't know. Being the OG in the locker room was kind of cool to me, bro. Just having that, like that stamp, big, big responsibility, but be able to lead a team and do it my way, mm-hmm. right? You know what I mean? Like guys, I think when I speak, guys naturally listen, and that's something that not a lot of leaders have, and not mm-hmm. a lot of people can say they have. And we have everything in our favor this year, bro. You just talked about it. We, you know, the only thing we were struggling a lot with last year was our defense. Mm-hmm. We got some guys in the off season, like a Bruce Brown, that can really help here, come in here and anchor that defense and really. Mm-hmm. uh you know, had that championship experience. Um, I'm excited for the All Star Game, obviously too. That's gonna be ending this gonna year. Be dope. You know, yeah. uh, y'all gonna see me there. By the way, just uh, you heard it here first. <laughs> 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 but uh, but bro, just having that um, having that come to the city and having that, like the league itself all come to show love to Indy. That's gonna be dope, bro. For mm-hmm. real, I think it's a city that really deserves it. You know, we were about to have the All Star Game in 2020, yeah. then COVID happened. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah, the reason why yeah, I got yeah. bumped up to this year. So sure. having an All Star Game there. And then, bro, just uh, proving a lot of people wrong, bro. It's hard coming out the Midwest. You know, we only got like, like one TV game a year. Mm-hmm. So no one ever really actually watched us play until like the playoffs. Yeah. You know, so just trying to, you know, just motivate more people, more people to tap in with us, bro, because we're going to be a good team this for year. Sure. For sure. For sure. We got a lot of talent. East. It's going to be fun, man. For sure. For sure. Thanks. But Miles, man, shit. We appreciate you coming on, bro. Thanks. It's bro, been absolutely. one hell of a pod. Um, I, I think a lot of people should really listen in on this whole podcast just because of like I've stated before you are the same person that you were back then Mm -hmm. when you were young and you were just coming up and you were just playing for fun and then going from just skipping ahead to right now you you have all these things that you that could deter you from being locked in but you're still there yeah you know what I'm saying and as AJ likes to bring up and he's right the business aspect of this whole thing is just as important. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I understand it. It's not a point of figure it, finger at you. Oh, oh, we don't like you. But this this NBA shit is a it's the business. Game, it's, baby. A business. It's, an industry. it's a business. <laughs> and you gotta you just gotta be ready for it. You gotta take it with a grain of salt and be a man about it. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, and understand you're gonna be all right. Sir. But Miles, we appreciate it, bro. Thank you for coming on. Hey, oh, listen. Man. Miles is the biggest thing on the pot. And but another thing. AJ back, man. Shit. <laughs> Damn, his fine money he ain't getting fine today. I ain't so it's good. Up. Yeah. <laughs> pockets, boy. Pockets, Thanks. boy. But Miles, hey, listen, bro. Absolutely. Love we brother. appreciate you, brother. Appreciate yeah. you, brother. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, hey, we got a podcast alum now. Miles Turner. We're gonna send you some merch. Love, man. Merch Thanks, coming so soon. Oh, I'm working on it. <laughs> it will not be in Warriors colors, though. Whoa, 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 <laughs> Big whoa, whoa, walk. Whoa, watch. whoa, whoa, whoa. It might be. Actually, it might be in Warriors colors. Shout out to CP, man. Shit. It might be in Warriors colors. But hey, that's another episode on Run Your Race. Y'all know what to do. Subscribe on YouTube. Uh, God, I ain't done this in a minute. Spotify. What is what I say on Spotify? Apple Podcasts. Y'all know what to do. All that stuff. Y'all just tune in on YouTube. Give us the views and all that stuff. <laughs> but y'all know we we gonna keep. Go- we just getting bigger and better. We just got Miles Turner on here. We get bigger and better, baby. Come on, we out. Peace. Peace.